Minasan, Okarina Sai. Today, someone I would like to consider a total babe. Like, I can't even with her sometimes. She is just. Whew. But she's also totally adorable. That's enough of me simping for her, though. Let's actually talk about her. Moi Toyota, born on March 15th, 1995, in Ibaraki Prefecture, affiliated with Style Cube. Moi wanted to become a voice actress after reading the manga Koromo no Omocha. Shoutouts to that second opening, by the way, I will always mention it anytime this show comes up. Also, when she saw the anime, a bo 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 when she was very young. That is indeed the show's name, by the way. Look it up and look up that man's amazing hair. She actually grew up reading Shonen Jump, especially in middle school. She was also a big fan of the anime Higurashi no Nako Koroni, and had a big passion for idols. Around that time, Seiyu were also starting to get into idol work, so she thought to herself she can experience both of her favorite things at once. In 2012, Moishi passed Style Cube's voice actor audition, and became a trainee while she was still in high school. She debuted as a Seiyu by performing as an unnamed side character in the anime Nakaimo, My Little Sister is Among Them, and also a similar role in the Echi series So I Can't Play H. 2013, Moe joined Stylips at the same time with Miku Ito, who was also a trainee at the time. The two took over for Kaori Ishihara and Yui Ogura, who had very recently just graduated from the group. Their single Prism Sympathy was released, the ending theme for the Ilya Fate spinoff. This year was also her first named role of Sakura Inami in Beyond the Boundary, and another unnamed role in Kiss Sis, which is peak of degeneracy. I definitely recommend. Not actually though. Insert the eyes emoji. 2014, some more named characters, and actually her first lead, Fumi Kujo in Jinsei, which is one of the first anime I ever watched in Japanese, and Mei and recently My Little Sister is Unusual. Aimi is in the show as well. She was also Kurumi Kakura in Saki the Nationals, something I've never heard of but it must be very popular in Japan because it has multiple games, manga, anime seasons, as well as a live action TV drama and a live action movie. With Stylips, their track Nova Revolution was the ending theme for the anime movie Don Yatsu. And I love this cover so much. They also had a double single release, Junsui na Fujinbutsu and Spika, the opening and ending theme for the comic artist and his assistants. Then another full album release, their final one in fact, The Supernova Strikes. In May of 2015, her and Miku Ito joined Pixis, Stylips' new unit. Moishi is also apparently the one in charge of the costume designs. Stylips had the song Mayo Mayo Compass Wa Iranai, the second ending theme for Gundam Build Fighter Try and Give Me Secret, the eighth and final single from them, the ending theme for High School DD, Newborn. They did have one more anime song though, Dramatic Cycle, the opening for Saki Biyori Animation, a one episode short series. As a seiyu, she voiced Karona Kashimaru in the Asterisk War, and she began her role of Sapphire Kawashima in Sound Euphonium. 2016 was the second season of the anime I just mentioned, as well as Idle Memories, where she voiced Vivi Lin and Fuyumi Fukagawa in Panda Peace. This year, Stylips would actually disband, but Pixis continued on as its own group, having their first live, Pixis Party 2016, also having their first album, First Love Warning. 2017, she provided the voice for Hatsuri Momoi in Action Heroin Cheer Fruits, a series that has been compared to Love Live, though I've never seen it or even heard of it until researching, but it's got Moishi and Miku, so I'm definitely interested now. Then she had her first photo book, titled More. I too would like more of Moishi. While Pixis had two singles, Flawless, the third ending for Duel Masters vs. Revolution Final, and the other song was Daisuke Janai, their second album Pop-Up Dream, as well as their first photo book, Harmony. 2018, this was her debut into Bang Dream, voicing Kanan Matsubara, the drummer of Hello Happy World. Unfortunately, this is one of the bands that does not perform live, so we won't be seeing Moi Chan on the drums anytime soon. But hey, you never know what the future holds. She definitely has the loud, outgoing personality of a drummer, even if her character doesn't. But with Pixis, she sang the song Lonely Alice, the ending theme for Alice or Alice. 2019, she voiced in two short episode series, Ana Asuka in Nobunaga Sensei's Young Bride, which she sang the opening theme with as Pixis. This is actually my song recommendation for her as well. No music video for it, however. None on YouTube, at least. But you can just look up the show's opening to find it. And she was also Moi in Hulang Babies, which obviously she shares the same name with. And I remember Miku also voicing a character with the same name as her in the show. So this made me think that all the Seiyu have the same names as the characters, but nope, just these two. Weird coincidence, maybe there's a reason I'm unaware of, but Suzuko Mamori is in this series and she doesn't voice the character Suzu. That is a missed opportunity if I've ever seen one. She was also Observer in the very popular Azir Lane. The last thing for this year is that she had her second photo book, Moi Emotion. Tomoyo Kurosawa is a big fan of this one. <laughs> 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 
Actually, so is Reina Ueda, but she was much more calm while she was reviewing it. Actually, Pixis also had another photo book come out as well, called Pop and Cute. And uh, yeah, stay thirsty, my friends. 2020, she was Jane in King's Raid Successors of the Will, and Shiori Yanazuki in the Shadowverse anime version. While scouring her Twitter for photos, I noticed her with a group of girls in the past and she referred to them as 10UC. Well, it was an X, but I think it's the Roman numeral for 10? Maybe it's not. It is a idol group within the franchise Idol Boo Show. It seems they were originally going to debut this year, but of course 2020 happened and their activities were put on hold. If you didn't already notice, Nanaka Sua is in this as well, along with a bunch of other talented ladies, but we'll get to that in a minute. First, in 2021, she voiced Luna in the strategy sim RPG Relayer for PlayStation. And in the anime version of the Blue Archive game, she has the lead role. That role being Hanako Urawa. The last thing for this year is the release of Pixis's Best Of album. This year of 2022, she is Misao Ushiki in Teppen, and she had her digital photo book, Off Mode. This year, thankfully, Idol Busho released a short movie, and I'm assuming this means they have resumed their activities. I already mentioned Sua, and obviously Moishi is in this, but just in case you weren't interested. This also has Ryo Karachi, Machiko, Reina Kondo, and Yuki Nakashima. Honestly, that's just a small handful of really talented people in this new franchise, so definitely check it out. Over the years, she has had small one-episode roles in shows like Banished from the Heroes Party, Boruto, Chronicles of the Going Home Club, and Demon Lord Retry. I also mentioned the two very early in her career in that 2012 section. She has been in a fair amount of video games over the years, but nothing too big. Fairy Fencer is like the only notable one. There's also Last Period, which has an amazing cast, but seems to be a Japan-exclusive game. Then of course, all the anime roles that were also video games, like Bandori, Shadowverse, King's Raid, and Blue Archive. Couldn't find any live action or foreign dubs, but she sang the openings and endings for Cheer Fruits, Sound Euphonium, Saki the Nationals, and Jinsei. These are all with the main cast of each shows respectively. She has been at Anisama a few times since 2017, with Pixis and with Sound Euphonium twice. This very recent fest, she was there with Silips. In fact, it was kind of a crossover with the two members her and Miku took over for. The final career things I would like to mention are that her and Miku were the host of Bandori's Hello Happy Circle, which unfortunately ended last April. And Pixis has their livestream program, Kira Kira Dai Sakusan. They do a lot of fun stuff over there. Miss Toyota is 152 centimeters or 5 foot even. She has herself a Twitter as well as an Instagram. She is actually very active on both of those. Her hobbies are dancing, reading manga, especially comedy manga, watching anime, designing clothes, and shopping. Her special skills include memorization and playing the trumpet, which she even played during her time in her school's brass band club in elementary school. She apparently was also a member of the tennis club in middle school. While playing the handkerchief game, which is basically Duck Duck Goose, it was revealed that Moishi is actually a really fast runner. Or maybe the Tricell girls are just really slow. Moe is an avid fan of Nogizaka 46 and has gone to their live shows. Her favorite member is Erika Ikuta. She admires bands as well as female idols from the 1980s, like Saiko Matsuda. Her favorite foods are white rice, ramen, yakiniku, natto, and cheese. Her favorite color is light pink, and she has an older brother. When the Sinnoh remakes of Pokemon came out, she posted a picture of her playing it and wearing a Piplup sweater. So I'm just going to go ahead and assume that's one of her favorite Pokemon. She was also gifted a Nintendo 64 with a bunch of games for her most recent birthday. By her older brother, in fact. Shoutouts to Onichan. She loves Hot Springs so much that when she has free time, she'll look at reservation sites for Hot Spring Inns. Also, when she finishes work early in the morning, she invites her friends to go on a day trip to one. The last two facts are very funny in my opinion. The first one is that Moishi has been trying to steal one of Miku's little brothers away, but Miku refuses to give him up. And finally, because of Moishi's very outgoing and forward personality, Miku's parents often ask her if she's feeling okay and staying out of trouble. She jokes that Miku's parents will stop allowing them to be friends if she doesn't behave well. But with that, we are finished. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope you've enjoyed looking at her beautiful face. Please join me in the next one where I will talk about a small cute orange cat girl.